Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this lecture is uh, for another colligative properties, and uh, like most of you know, this is a uh, solution. And uh, I'm going through, you know, those very important topic uh, from colligative one. Uh, I've done already two of the colligative properties, so this is going to be the third lecture, or uh, you know, in that sequence. And today I'm talking about depression in freezing point, right? In case you need a recap of what I've done so far, I'll tell you, you know, qualitative property is, uh, you know, something uh, that depends on the concentration of the solute and not on the nature of the solute. Let me repeat, those properties of a solution which are dependent over the concentration of solute and not on the nature of solute, these properties or all those properties are collectively called qualitative properties. So there are four properties. There are four properties that fall under the category of qualitative one. The first one is, let me write that. The first one is RLBP, right? The first one is RL, RLBP. What that means? Relative lowering of vapor pressure. I've already done this in a, you know, uh, in, uh, you know, in, in a Hindi lecture. And the second one, the second one is called, you know, elevation of boiling point. Elevation of boiling point. This also has been, uh, you know, done and, uh, you know, it's also in Hindi, you know. Uh, today, you know, the topic I am, you know, about to take you through is your third one. And this is called depression in freezing point. Depression in freezing point, right? Uh, forgive me for my poor handwriting. I hope you have started, you know, uh, realizing that. So, depression in freezing point is the today's topic. But in order to go through what the depression in freezing point is here, you have to start right from the freezing point. So you have to define it first, not that, you know, childhood one, you know, something standard, what you have right now. So I'm going to define freezing point first, right? So freezing point, this is our first one. Freezing, freezing point, freezing point, right? So what is this? The temperature, the Temperature, temperature at which, at which, at which vapor pressure of a liquid, vapor pressure of a liquid, of a liquid is equal to, is equal to, equal to vapor pressure in, equal to vapor pressure in, in its its solid state in its solid state you might be surprised why i'm writing vapor pressure in solid state actually i tell you what when a liquid is in uh, when a substance is in liquid form of course it will evaporate and form vapor right and but once you condense it you cannot you know say that the solid state of the substance cannot produce vapor it does produce vapor but in a very small quantity right so the evaporation is a natural phenomena in solid state it is quite low but in liquid state it is quite a bit you know uh, you know quite a bit more right so in solid state the vapor pressure is lower than that of the vapor pressure in the liquid state right so this is what you know the definition says let me repeat it it is the temperature, the depression, uh, that uh, freezing point is the temperature. You know, when the vapor pressure of a liquid in its liquid state become equal to the vapor pressure of, uh, you know, the, that very same substance in its solid state, right? I, in case you need to make up a very short way to do that, this is what you can do. I'm trying to make, uh, you know, my own, right? So let's get back to the, uh, you know, uh, rest part, which is going to be important. So what we need to do, we need to uh, you know, draw a graph right here, right? So for doing that, I am, you know, I have to take something here. Suppose this is, you know, this is a container where a liquid, where a liquid is having these vapor. So they represent to the vapor pressure, vapor pressure of liquid, right? So this represent to vapor pressure of liquid, right? Vapor pressure of liquid. And then, you know, suppose there you have another container that they is saying, but now we have this liquid in the form of this liquid in the form of ice, right? So this represents to ice here, you know, in solid state. So basically, I'm talking about water. So there, you know, it has some vapor, very small, right? Suppose this, uh, it, the vapor pressure is quite low, and this represents to vapor pressure in solid state, right? In solid state. One important thing you have to go simultaneously is that when you decrease the temperature. You do know that the vapor pressure is directly goes to the temperature. So once you start decreasing the temperature, the vapor pressure will start decreasing. 
But in case of solid, the in case of solid, the vapor pressure decreases, you know, rapidly. The vapor pressure decreases, you know, rapidly. But in case of you know vapor pressure of liquid, if you decrease the temperature, the vapor pressure decreases, but it decreases slowly. So the graph is going to be in the solid state, the graph is going to be like that. But in liquid state, the graph is going to be like that. Right? So let's draw that. So this is what I am, you know, trying to make you go. You know, suppose this uh, x axis represent to the you know temperature. This represent to temperature, and this represent to vapor pressure. This represent to vapor pressure. And suppose this is the you know particular vapor pressure in solid state. And once you start decreasing the temperature, the graph will go something like something like this. Suppose this is the graph you obtain obtain in solid state while you decrease the temperature. So this is the vapor pressure vapor pressure. Of you know substance in solid state, right? And then you know uh, if it's in liquid state, what will happen? This will again decrease, but the decrease is going to be the decrease is going to be slightly slightly slower, right? So there, this is the you know point at which vapor pressure of both liquid and solid state are you know intersecting. So this is the this is the temperature which represents to the Freezing point of the solvent. T F not I am representing. So this is the you know temperature axis, temperature axis, and this represents to the T F not. What that means? Vapor pressure. Sorry, sorry. Uh, it's freezing point, freezing point of pure liquid, right? In short, F T P L, freezing point of pure liquid. So this is the temperature for a liquid when it is in pure state. Now go with the second option here. So what this one represented? This one represented vapor pressure, vapor pressure in liquid, right? Vapor pressure in liquid. Now talk about some other, you know, assumption. Suppose what you get right now, you uh, not only have the solvent water here, but you have also added some salt or any non-volatile substance. So I am highlighting them. Suppose this is your non-volatile solute right here. Non-volatile solute. So what will happen? The vapor pressure will further decrease. You do know that uh, when you add a non-volatile solute to a solvent, the vapor pressure of the solution decreases to that of the vapor pressure of the liquid in pure, uh, pure state. So this is what represent. This is what represent vapor pressure. Vapor pressure in solution. Vapor pressure in solution phase. Okay. Now. Uh, what will happen if you further decrease the temperature this time the graph is going to definitely it will be down somewhere here so this will start decreasing again and this is sorry i'm a little bit you know poor for okay so this is what happened here so this goes something like this so there you know the vapor pressure of the solution you know is again equal to the you know vapor pressure of the solid so this is the you know this is the point at which the at which the temperature At which the temperature is called freezing point of the solution. This is your T F, T F, and what this T F represent to? This represent to freezing point, freezing point of solution, freezing point of solution, right? So this is how you draw the graph for change in the freezing point for a liquid uh, in its pure state and also in solid state and also in solution, you know, form. Now come back to the derivative part. What we need to, you know, uh, think here is that this is the this this difference is called this difference is called you know depression in freezing point depression in freezing point right and this is represented by delta T F delta T F so depression in freezing point of the solution is represented by delta T F now get back here so uh, we have we have delta T F delta T F That is equal to zero. Uh, this is phi more than the freezing point of the solution. So T F not minus T F. So delta T F is equal to T F not T F not minus T F minus T F. Right. So this is the first condition coming up. Now get back to the second one. The second one says that the delta T F delta T F is directly proportional to the concentration of the solute. Concentration of the solute. What that mean? You know this. Depression in freezing point is due to addition of the solute here. You know, once you added the solute, then the vapor pressure for the decrease. You know, it came right from here to there. It's because you added some solute, right? So what that means? This change in the freezing point is directly proportional to the concentration of the solute, right? What I'm doing right now, I'm going to you know the solvent purpose. So delta T F 
beta TA is uh, you know directly proportional to molarity of the solution. Molarity of the solution. Molarity. Why molarity? I have explained you already. So what we need to do right now is just solve it. So delta T A, delta T A, delta T A is equal to there is a constant coming up here. This is K and multiplied by M. What K is? Uh, in boiling point, you know, elevation there was K B, which was called elevation constant. Right here, it's called you know depression constant, or the very scientifically this is called cryoscopic constant. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write this name uh, right over here. So this is called cryoscopic constant. Cryoscopic Scopic constant, cryoscopic constant, right? And again, it depends on the nature of the solute and the solvent as well. Uh, I tell you one thing. I will do a separate lecture uh, just to make you go uh, that what is the unit of KB and K and how. So, but in short, if you want to know what is the unit of K, you know, I'm going to write here. It's Kelvin, Kelvin kg, kg per mole, Kelvin kg per mole. So this is the unit of K. This is the unit of K. Right? What we need to do right now is to solve it. So this comes out to be delta T A. Delta T A. I hope it's coming. Okay. So delta T A is equal to K F K F multiplied by you know molarity, which is nothing but uh, number of moles of solute multiplied by thousand thousand by thousand. I'm just uh, coming to that. So uh, N two. Uh, and then you know W one. What W one is? Weight of the solvent. Weight of the solvent. I'm writing here weight of of solvent. Right? Weight of solvent. I've done all these in the previous lecture. But then uh, one last thing we need to do is to solve it further. So delta T F delta T F is equal to it's going to be K F K F multiplied by you know W two, which is nothing but given mass of the solute multiplied by thousand. Thousand, why thousand? Because if this uh, given mass of solvent is in gram, you have to convert it in kg, right? So thousand divided by divided by molar mass of the solute into given mass of the solvent. So this is the formula you know you obtain for the depression in the freezing point. Right? Another formula you can get you know by solving further is M2, right? So M2 is going to be M2 is equal to you know this is going to be Kf. K multiplied by W2 given mass of solute multiplied by thousand to convert it into kg divided by divided by uh, its W1 and then you know the delta T F. You can also you know uh, write uh, that is uh, that is T F T F not minus uh, right here. You can also write delta T F as delta uh, T F not minus T F. So this is what another equation you obtain, which is called the molar mass of the solute in case of depression in freezing point is taking place, right? So let me give you a recap of what I was talking. Actually, I was talking about you know colligative properties. So what is colligative property? The properties of the solution that depends on the concentration of solute and not on the nature of the solute, right? So there are four properties uh, that depends uh, on the concentration of solute. So there are four properties falling into the category of a colligative mode. First, relative lowering of vapor pressure. Second, elevation of boiling point. Third, depression in freezing point. These two already have been done, so you can go and check out after you have done all that. Okay, the fourth one is called lowering of osmotic pressure, which I will do in the next lecture, right? So, but after that, what I just did, I defined this freezing point. What freezing point is? It is the temperature at which vapor pressure of a liquid becomes equal to the vapor pressure of that very sub uh, same substance in its solid state, right? Even a solid, uh, even a substance in solid state can form vapor. Quite low, but it, it does form, right? So, what we did then, we made, uh, we plotted a graph for vapor pressure of the you know liquid and vapor pressure of the solid. And this is the first graph we obtained here. This is the you know uh, solid state graph. This is the liquid state graph. And the point at which they both intersect, this is the you know uh, freezing point of the pure solvent. But what happens if you add a non-volatile solute, the vapor pressure further decreases. And then this graph uh, you know go that way and it meets right over here. So this is the temperature at which 
you know uh, at which the freezing point of the solution is represented after that uh, you know the difference here is called depression in freezing point which is equal to large minus small so ta not minus k i just did it right here and then we did you know uh, a bit of the calculation part delta ta to that was going to solve it because everything changed due to addition of the solute right and then solute is expressed in terms of molarity so i give you change that molarity and after that i did nothing but uh, solving it further and you have these two very important equation coming up what i suggest you practice you know uh, if you don't have it you know in a very fast attempt you have to repeat it back you have to you know check this again if you also need to go back and check out the previous lecture because there's something you know already related to that so you must do that in order to go very smooth right so with this i must point this lecture right here i'll say thanks for watching take care and take care very uh, take very good care of you know people uh, not only you know someone you know but also people you don't know and if they need right because this is what i feel these day uh, you know uh, this something you know i feel uh, it's a heartfelt you know matter to me so thanks for watching take care